Hi everyone, welcome back to the Armour Roll Summer Grill. Tim Hodges with Cam McConville. We're reflecting on some of the big stories of 2016. One of those was the 100th running of the Indianapolis 500. I was lucky enough to be there, Cam. It was 400,000 people. It was the centenary running, a rookie one. It was quite the show. If you're looking to do a big motorsport extravaganza, it's certainly one to tick off the bucket list. Yeah, I'd love to go, Timmy, and I know there was a group of media that uh, that went over there with you, and some drivers too, some V8 drivers uh, flew across, I'm pretty sure Frosty and a few of them uh, went over. Greg Murphy was yeah. uh, probably unfortunate enough to be my uh, roommate for, <laughs> for the, the weekend, but it was a great experience just to see, you know, we've, I've been lucky enough to go to NASCAR races before, but this was the biggest scale I've ever seen, just getting into the into the place was ridiculous. We had to get police escorts. We were lucky enough to be part of Pertec Team Murray, which in itself you have to admire. Uh, and I know he's basically the boss of this joint with Speed Cafe, but for Brett Murray, he had a, a dream to run a car. He thought, well, there'd be no better time than to run it in the Windy 500, which he adores, than the 100th running of it. You have to admire what he did to yeah. put his cojones on the line and his finances to actually go and do the thing. Yeah, huge. And I remember when it was launched and uh, I met or uh, well, bumped into Matty Brabham at Homebush 2015. And I just thought this is a pipe dream. I mean, I saw the car concept, uh, full initiative, great initiative, but this is a long shot to get there. So full kudos to the whole team, uh, Murray and uh, Pertec, of course, to getting on board. Matty Brabham, you can't, you can't say enough about him. Great kid. Uh, you know, left our shores quite early after Formula Ford. So to realise a dream and have another generation Brabham on the grid, I've never been there, but as you say, 400,000 people. His result was modest in the 20s, but he brought it home. And uh, gee, I just hope he can get back there again next year. Yeah, I think everyone was just slightly disappointed with the 22nd place finish. They were unlucky at the end not to get a caution that they desperately needed. Can you put yourself in his shoes, the letdown from May 29 this year to the be at the you know the top of the game in the running in the Indy 500 and now he just hasn't been able to get anything going forward in 2017 apart from you know running in the stadium super trucks but yeah he ran in the Toyota series at Sydney it must be frustrating for a racing car driver oh it would be and a young one with such great pedigree you know if you can drive an Indy car I remember seeing the vision of the test days leading up to the Indy 500 I thought that is fast you know and most drivers go oh yeah I could do that I went oh I don't know if I could yeah. do that you know around the oval so I just love to see him stay in America as you say he did the TRS series stadium trucks I just don't know if that's damaging his brand a bit like I'd like to see him just focus on one thing and trying to make it into IndyCar and I'm not convinced coming back here is going to help him do that so uh, let's just hope a little bit of luck and we can see him back in there and to be a, a top 10 or a top 5 in the Indy 500 next year. Just briefly do you think we'll ever see him maybe in supercars? I, I think so it's a real shame because with all the efforts Crush has put in, Pertec, all that money behind him if he doesn't realise his dream in getting a second season because let's be honest I know a rookie won the race in Rossi but that's a, that's, that's a real rarity. So I'd love to see him get back there. But I think it is heading to, towards a, a V8 supercar career for him. But I hope he doesn't give up just yet. It was one of the cool stories of 2016, the 100th running of the Indianapolis 500. Here is Matt Brabham. Well, a big year in the life of Matt Brabham, making your debut in the Indy 500. Is it surreal to look back on now and say, that was me, I was in that race? Yeah, I'm still kind of pinching myself a little bit. Um, I mean, it's just an absolutely incredible experience. And, uh, you know, I don't think it will ever, I can ever relive that feeling again. So uh, I'm definitely treasuring it. And, uh, and it. and it feels kind of weird now, you know, when people come up and ask me about it and the race and everything, and I can kind of say, oh yeah, I was a part of that. And uh, and kind of relive the moment as I describe it back to them. So it's it's definitely wonderful. And, uh, you know, now it's just maybe even more hungry to, to try and get back in and do some more stuff in the future. You come up obviously through the road to Indy and you've, you've raced on the Indy Speedway in, in other categories, but what sort of surprised you most on the weekend? What made you go, wow, this is, uh, this is the Indy 500? I think just uh, you know, standing on the grid with Crusher and, and everyone and, and getting into the car and, and that whole um, first few moments right when the race is about to start, because uh, you know, obviously there's quite big crowds through Carb Day and leading up to the event, but there's nothing that ever compares to the, the amount of people that flock in on race day. And, uh, and you're standing there on the grid, you know, as I said, with, with my family, Crusher, you know, the guy who made it all happen. And, uh, and it just hits you because all the people are there. Everything feels narrower because it's just so, so crowded. And, uh, and, and it's kind of a weird feeling. And that's, that's definitely the most surprising 
thing that really gets you in the gut and the, and the heart. Um, but it's kind of funny because once you roll out off the grid and you start rolling around and getting ready for the race, you know, it all kind of disappears and you're just focusing on what you're doing. And so on that, how did you rate your own performance across the whole two weeks? Not bending it was obviously pretty important and, and you tick that box. And in the end, like with the fuel strategy, it could have gone either way. You could have jagged quite a bit more than you ended up with. Absolutely. I think um, it was. it's one of those hard things. You know, we had a team, um, you know, Protec Team Murray, and, uh, you know, the first time that the team really got together and were running, you know, full steam was the first practice session at the Indy Grand Prix. And, uh, and obviously we had some issues, you know, no fault of anyone's own. You know, it was just, um, you know, when you have a brand new team like that, you know, yes, we're running with KV Racing, but, you know, there's just things that we have to iron out and, uh, and everyone has to think on their feet quick and, and get going as quickly as, as they can. And, and it's the same for me as a driver. You know, that's the first time, um, you know, I ever got to run red tires was uh, in qualifying at, at the Indy Grand Prix when it counts. And, uh, and it was just uh, a few little things that, you know, hindered us here and there, but that was to be expected. And, and overall, if it's a performance of myself and the driver and the team, you know, I was very happy. Um, you know, always, you know, you're wishing for more and I would have loved to have gone out and won, you know, both races, but, you know, it's obviously very tough to do that. And, uh, you know, I think I gained so much experience racing with guys like that um, and I proved for sure that, you know, I deserve to be there. And, you know, I think Crusher and everyone around me was very happy how things went. Pertec, all those guys, the sponsors, you know, that's almost the most important thing first off getting around the track and, and finishing the lap is the second thing and not causing any damage. And then, you know, the third thing is, is the results after that. And, and that's all a bonus. You mentioned before how hungry you are to, to really make it an IndyCar and get another opportunity. It's obviously a very tough thing to do and there's budgets involved and all that sort of thing. Are you, are you hell bent on the IndyCar program or are you looking at say IMSA and opportunities there that might be available in GT cars? I think IndyCar is my number one goal at the moment and, and it has been for the last couple of years. I think it's such a cool series, a lot of history and, uh, and, and it's something I want to be a part of so bad, especially after you know, getting my big break with, with Crusher, Pertec, Team Murray, getting on the grid. I mean, it was just such a cool experience and, uh, and it's something that it's just made me more hungry to, to, to keep continuing on that. So I'm hoping you know, and, and praying and, and trying everything I have to try and get into IndyCar in the future. It's my number one goal, but at the same time, you know, if things don't work out, I'm looking at elsewhere for other options to keep relevant. So I'm looking at IMSA, sports cars, um, you know, WEC in Europe, um, some stuff here in Australia um, with the V8 guys and, and other things going on. And, and obviously, you know, anything that has wheels on it, I'll drive. And, uh, you know, I, I loved racing the super trucks this year with Traxxas and, and those guys and Robbie Gordon. It was, it was awesome, you know, and I'm a, I'm a racer at heart and I just love racing so much. So I think, you know, I'd, if anyone told me to get in anything, I, I would do it without hesitation. I just, just love it. Each week, Armour All will be giving away the ultimate summer essentials pack. The pack comprises a range of products to keep your car cool and clean this summer. The pack includes Armor Oil Wash and Wax Pro Glide, Armor Oil Sponge, Armor Oil Protectant, Armor Oil Air Fresheners, Armor Oil Cream Cut and Polish, Armor Oil Windscreen Wash, and Armor Oil Glass Wipes. You'll also win an Armor Oil Bucket Esky to keep you cool this summer. To enter the draw, all you have to do is click on the link in the description below and fill in your details. It's that easy. We'll see you tomorrow for another episode of the Armour All Summer Grill. Not only do I like my car to look like new, I like it to smell like new. And Armour All have this great range of vent clip air fresheners. Now that sleek and compact design you see there makes them even easier to use. The new range lasts up to 30 days and comes in five different fragrances. Vanilla, leather, wild berry, pure linen and new car. Simply pull the strip to release the fragrance and clip your Armour All air freshener into your car's air conditioning vent to keep your car smelling fresh.